We're gonna play Faith like a detective. I want to get an overview. For that we have a text editor here. We're gonna start with the intro. So uh, we are in a car. Blue in car. Set to one. It is seven. Uh, okay, I was in the house 90, uh, 86. Have to finish. Uh, rogue, so I'm I'm going rogue. I have to finish something I started at uh, 86. Today is September 21st, 87. Okay, so far so good. Let's start with instructions. A catechismus. To move, use WASD or arrow keys. And we could use a gamepad, I'm not gonna do that. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Okay, so we can tell we are a priest. We can tell by the white uh, pixels around my neck. That's like a priest's priesty color. Face demons and cast them out with a space key or a button. Exorcist. So I did indeed watch the Exorcist. And I have played this game a few times and I have to agree that this, the feel is very similar. I mean, this takes a lot from a movie. So we are ready to start the game. So we arrive by car. And, well, there's, there's a path. These tracks here I don't think are important. Um, oh yeah, I'm also gonna go with using cheat engine, because uh, this game is quite slow. Yeah, so now I can move uh, at reasonable frame rate and speed. First, let's check out this area. We're just gonna walk on the street. I know what's gonna happen, but I think it's it's just hilarious. The truck just said the name of a developer, I think. So we just respawn at the last checkpoint, or at the last save point when we die. We're gonna go north first. We're gonna... Okay, so this is a creepy monster that's stalking us, but we can just hold the cross into the right direction and repel it. There's a deer, but it doesn't react. Also, this, this creepy creature is also looking for deer. We I didn't know that he can spawn here. I thought uh, places where there are things to interact with are off limits. You're invited. Come celebrate Nate, Jason's sixth birthday. That's young. I don't think they play a role in this game. Saturday, May 3rd. Go past the well, north of well. So these are the directions to the main building in this, in this game. Snake Meadow Hill Road is the road we were riding on. So we have to go north to get to this party. Uh, whoa, that was close. I hate it when he spawns from the same uh, border that I enter the screen. Okay, so I have to react to this creepy thing and repel it into the right direction. So this is where I'm trying to go, but it's locked as you can hear and see. Okay, he called me father, that's creepy. Uh, the, the map scrolls, so if I keep going to the right, I will appear at the same place where I started. Hey, can I have some monster? Okay, he doesn't appear on every screen. Come on now. Okay, we have more things to interact with here. Uh, to, be, to be exact, only one. So, more information. Who is Mr. Martin? Martin. A uh, historical uh, cemetery on property. Officers had difficulty identifying who was buried there. The inscriptions on the gravestones are written in a language that we cannot identify. So somebody has been writing nonsense on gravestones or maybe it's an ancient language. Or maybe it's just some exotic language for the locals. Sent to UOOC. Daryl Henderson Historical Society. So we know that we are in Connecticut. I guess that's relevant. The other two gravestones, unfortunately, are not interactive. Okay, let's slowly walk to the right. 
Ah, stupid monster. I think I'm gonna slow down the game so I can react quicker. These landmarks, they are permanent and constant, so we can use them to orientate ourselves. So now we're gonna go down and I'm gonna start walking on this row again because there's more things to find. See, that these two screens just looked identical. Oh, look at that. So I repelled him often enough so that he dropped a note. You can miss that, by the way. Father Garcia. I don't know if that's me. You are hereby instructed to release Michael Davies from your care and return him to his home immediately. Mr. and Mrs. Davies have already been contacted by our office. A representative of the church is currently en route to their home to discuss compensation in return for their discretion. You will meet our representative there and accompany him back to Rome. Cardinal Gifford. Okay, so it's possible that we are playing Father Garcia. This Michael Davies was in the care of Garcia and considering Catholic Church scandals that could have, uh, have been abuse or maybe some maybe it's just something uh, less horrible har har and he was just trying to exor extort exorcise him? How do you say that? Here's another thing we can get some ghost out of. Bob who is Bob? The kids and I miss you more every day. The twins and Amy have started their next school year here at home. Amy keeps asking when she's going to be allowed to go to real school. I think she's getting cabin fever. What is cabin fever? Cabin fever. Claustrophobic reaction. Took place when person or group ends up in isolation. Okay, I think he is the father of Amy, two boys. Okay, the twins are Nate and Jason, probably. The twins are having no problems occupying their time. Yesterday they came in with their hands covered in bl what? blood. I guess they found a dead deer and thought it would be a good idea to touch it. I think we might have a coyote problem because when I went out with them to look at the dead deer, it was a pretty gruesome sight. All this just a day after the twins birthday party. Can't wait till you come home. Okay, so this uh, happened on May 4th uh, and I can already tell it's it's Michael Davies who did this and it, Michael Davies is also the white monster that roamed around. If you actually get a chance to get a deer between you and Michael Davies, the monster, then he will attack the deer, which is clearly an indication of this being about him. Probably killed the family. Maybe he did that on May 4th. Okay, let's continue. We still gotta find a lot of stuff. But the Michael Davies should stop haunting us now, I believe. The Martins house lies about 100 yards off of Snake Meadow Hill Road. There is almost no driveway. Trees just out in the middle of the gravel path that is mostly covered in grass. It was difficult to find their house, especially since it was already dark when we arrived. Father Alred seemed to know where he was going. He simply drove straight ahead until we arrived at the house. In the headlights I saw an old shed off to the right of the path, which is where we are now. Father Alred explained that he would rather perform the exorcism away from the house, but the Martins had insisted that Amy remain inside. Okay, so Amy needs an exorcism. He complained that having the family present makes it difficult to proceed with elements of the right that may seem harsh to the layperson. Okay, so I think this is what happened. Father Alred and Father Garcia, which is me, uh, we were called to perform an exorcism on Amy. So Amy is probably possessed. So let's go inside here. Check out the window. He's still out there. Key. Okay, that, that I had to react to. And this one we haven't had yet. Interestingly enough, if you go north at the wrong place, then you will end up in this tile. Public Lecture Lecture by Carl James Osborne. Connecticut's historical connections to witchcraft, citizen and the beast system. The beast system? Wednesday, 8 p.m. Carl James Osborne. Uh, one of these freaks. People paranoid about Satanism. Okay, let's go south. Okay, so we have something here. A squirrel. We cannot exercise it. 
if we walk into the center, chaos reigns. I don't know who says that, maybe the squirrel. But more on that later, much later. Okay, there's water here. Let's read that. I caught some people walking through the woods around the house last week. Not kids, just regular adults. They told me they got lost while hiking. I pointed them back towards the road. The whole thing just didn't feel right. I think I should go dig up Bob's rifle out of storage. Okay, so I think the wife, I don't know what her name is, uh, she wrote about the kids got rifle to protect against two unknowns. Who are the two unknowns is the question, not the brothers. Was it from last year about us? Did we lie about what our intentions were? No, I think it's somebody else. Oh, there's a tree here. I mean, a special tree. Let's exercise that. Today I noticed Amy's favorite tree looks like it's dying. All the needles are falling off it and the bark is peeling. I guess I'm more upset about it than Amy is. She's totally absorbed in her volunteer work at the clinic. Aha, uh -huh. okay, let's write that down. Amy volunteers at clinic. Maybe, uh, I don't know, the, the creature that possesses her likes to drink blood or something. I guess it's good that she found something she's passionate about, but I've gotten ugly looks from some of the women at book club. Kathy and her religious friends won't even talk to me anymore. What does that mean? Is she maybe at an abortion clinic? Kathy and religious friends. Bully wife. I don't know what Amy's mother's name is. I hope we find out. Here we are and we saw some purple creature inside. Okay, this is not interactive. There's some text here. Let's read that. Mr. and Mrs. Martin greeted us at the front porch. Mr. Martin led us downstairs to the basement explaining that Amy was down there in restraints. I felt for him. There was guilt and shame in his voice. Amy was in the very back of the attic in a chair, perfectly calm, staring at us. I'm sorry, did you say attic and basement? Basement and attic are opposites, aren't they? It is hard to describe the look on her face. It was not the kind of look a child gives you. Okay. Let's read this. This is Amy. And these are the Martins. Look innocent, don't they? So we need to go to the attic or the cellar. Oh, look at that, there's somebody outside. Who the heck? I never saw this before, this is the first time I noticed. Who was that? Boy, oh boy. Check it out. In the mirror there is a shadowy creature behind us, but we cannot do anything about it. So creepy. There's nothing else to interact with here. We can go out, but there's nothing really. So let's go upstairs, I guess. Why not? All right, here we have a door. Oh, I didn't realize we can actually extort the exercise, whatever, the duck, interact with the duck. I don't feel safe in my own home anymore. I hear voices outside around the house at night. I don't let the twins go out in the woods to play because I'm afraid of what's out there. The house itself feels stressed, distorted, slanted somehow. It's like I'm walking through a carnival funhouse. Amy's condition has only gotten worse. I can't stand to be around her and I don't know why. She just doesn't seem like herself anymore. I want to take her to the doctor, but I can't leave the boys here. I find that the phone stops working throughout the day, and now I can't seem to find my car keys. Thank God Bob comes home tomorrow. I would like to know the date on this. I wonder why Bob is gone so much. Uh, yeah, okay. So the mother, again, we don't know her name still, is still very concerned. I guess I was the only one who thought to check in the attic. When I got up there, it was freezing cold. I found Amy standing in the back, looking straight at me like when I first met her downstairs. We spoke briefly, although it was frustrating to talk to her, or it. I experienced a bit of deception from the demon. During our conversation, she uttered my mother's first name and in other instances spoke perfect Latin. I called for help from the others, but nobody came. So I raised my crucifix and began the rite again. Who are the others? I believe this is a message from Father Alred. I'm not sure, but I think so. It's interesting. 
interesting that he was able to just frustratingly talk to it and it didn't attack him immediately. Bob must be stationed somewhere in the Middle East. Oh, I see. Because he sent over this weird looking doll for Amy's birthday. I'll ask Anish about it next time we have book club. Huh. Anish. Uh, she looks like she could be from over there. Well, that's nice racial stereotyping, I guess, or something like that. Amy didn't seem excited to see the doll. I think she would rather have a phone instead, or maybe seeing a baby doll makes her feel self-conscious about working at the clinic. I see, so it is an abortion clinic. Well, the people around here don't like that. Can we exorcise any of these toys? It's interesting how they're all colorful, but none of them are interactive. Okay, maybe later. So this is the twins' room. I mean, yeah, sure, the girl works in the abortion clinic, but at least the father is at war. So, I guess the crazy book club members sent them a cursed doll. But that doesn't exist and demons aren't real, so what the heck? Ah, ah, I see, because she's guilty, she's guilty because she's bullied into being guilty. So that's what this is all about. It's just guilt. Dear Amy, thanks for writing. It really brightened my day hearing from you. That's probably the father writing. In your letters, you asked what's the weirdest thing I've seen as a missionary. Oh, so maybe he's not a soldier. Maybe he's a missionary, the father. The area we are working in has a lot of folks who practice Queen Bamba. It's what you might call a pagan religion. It's kind of a mix of Catholic and African religions. One of the saints they worship here is San La Muerte, or Saint Death. Yesterday we talked to a boy about 15. When we asked him if he had ever prayed, he said, no, but I have prayed to San La Muerte. He told us about a time when he stayed over at his cousin's house and, according to him, they prayed to some figures of San La Muerte and the figures made things in the house move around. He got real quiet and scared looking after that. We told him he could pray to God and that God wouldn't make him feel scared like that. We invited him to church, but he hasn't come yet. I need to wrap this uh, letter up and get back to work. See you in four months. Leighton. Leighton is not Bob. Who the heck is Leighton? The husband might be a soldier. It's not clear. I don't know who Leighton is. Or is it one of the fathers? Father Leighton Graciel? Leighton Alred? Strange. I don't think there's anything else here. I don't think any of these is interactive, but we're gonna double check, because I'm hungry for more text. I'm hungry for more lore. Hey, you are kind of standing behind this. All right. Oh, more text. Amy's parents could not endure witnessing the proceedings of the right for long. Mrs. Martin was hysterical and the thing that was inside Amy was feeding off of the fear. Father Alred, this is probably me writing, asked me to take the Martins upstairs. I was physically worn out but managed to get them back up the stairs into the kitchen. Amy was screaming, mother, mother, the whole time. Finally, I got them to sit down with me at the kitchen table. After a few minutes, we couldn't hear much of anything down in the basement, so I went down to check on things. I found Father Alred lying on his back, unconscious, with his arms spread out wide. Amy was not in the chair. I don't know. Maybe I'm Father Alred. And I survived. And Father Gra Garcia did not. Check this out. There was a monster here. And now it's here. Hello. She is here. she is here. She is Amy. Except she's possessed. Can we interact with this again? No. Is she gonna appear in this room? No. Music's creepy though. Are you coming? So we have to haunt and then we have to haunt into the correct direction. It's not very hard. We just have to be fast. Hello. You failed me. You failed me. Uh, anything in here? What did you say? I forgive something? Anyways, we keep going. Um, let's go downstairs. Oh, there she was. Oh, uh, whoops, I was too slow. Mortis. Darn it. Hello, lady. Please go. 
Okay, cool. When, <laughs> cool. When we do this here, she flies to the door. When we do it downstairs, she actually we actually get a message that she that the door opens upstairs. Very cool. There's nobody in this puppet, even though it has a face. Karen. Is this Kathy? The church might contact you in a few days to tell you their version of what happened to me. I want you to hear it from me first. A year ago I was involved in the exorcism of Amy Martin. What they said in the papers about what happened isn't true. She, she, something my superior, killed. She killed my superior, Father Alred or Garcia, with magic. When I confronted her, she uh, managed to cut the power to the house. Somebody else managed to cut the power to the house, probably. And she killed her own parents with their own children? I don't know. I have to go back to that house. The nightmares I'm having are real. She's still there, waiting for me. I can still help her. If I don't come back, know that I love you and I'm so sorry. Okay, I am John. My name is John. I'm pretty sure that's me. Now the question is, which last name do I have? Why did I not write anything for Leighton? Pen pal of Amy? He's a missionary. Karen is the wife. Wife of player character. And uh, John, player. Uh, which we can just put over here. Not really going rogue, just going without permission. So we have to go north. Nothing, nothing we can interact with. Hello. My God, what happened to you? My face is pretty. I have to finish what I started. Whoops, my uh, priest. my speed hacks make the text go way too fast. Okay, what if we just hang ar hang out? What if we just hang out? Nothing's happening. That's interesting. What if we go away? No, we cannot go away. Invisible wall. All right, so we're using that cross, and there's a demon. We have to kind of evade it. Oh yeah, okay. Come over here. Come over here. So I can properly w Excellent. Okay. Whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, shoot. Ah, I... Okay. This is one of the hardest parts of this exorcism, which is also why I'm returning the speed to normal. Freaking heck. Oh, that was close. Whoa, that was close. No, oh, this is much easier. There we go. Come on now, we can finish this. There we go. Next phase unlocked. I like this animation. Whoa. One, two, three. Okay, and then there's a circle. Okay, one, two, three. And then there's a circle. One, two, three. And then there's a circle. One, two, three. And then there's a circle. One, two, oh, shoot. Okay. Well, we'll get to see this cool animation again. Pow, right out of a kisser. And a one, two, three. All right. One, two, three. Whoop. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, good. Good thing we evaded that guy. Hello, what what now? You return to this spot. 
She jumped out of the window. I think we're done here. Cool, cool, cool. Nothing to interact with here. Let's speed up. Down we go. Kill her, it says. Why should we trust the text on the floor? So there's a gun here. Let's take the gun. A gun with one bullet. A gun with one bullet. That's, that's very limiting. So if we go out, we can try to find something to shoot. Look at that, we have a girl. She's full of blood, but we cannot approach her. She doesn't react, but we can shoot her. Let's follow the path of the blood and do the horrible thing. Now we just have to get to our car. Here's the car. And now we drive the car. And the police is behind us. Game over, ending one of five. Murderer. Police arrest a man accused of murdering a missing girl. A New York man is in custody after he confessed to the murder of a sterling girl who had been missing. Uh, we are from New York. Uh, John Ward of Palmyra was pulled over on Snake Meadow Hill Road last night after a state trooper reported hearing a gunshot. The officer thought it might be poachers. The officer said Ward was acting nervous and suspicious after being pulled over. When questioned, Ward reportedly said, I've killed her. According to the police report, the officer called for backup after Ward became increasingly upset, saying repeatedly that there was a demon inside her. Ward was taken to Sterling Police Headquarters for further questioning. Ward then confessed to authorities that he shot and killed Amy Martin, a 17-year-old girl who had been missing for nine days after escaping from a mental institution. She was in a mental institution. Nine days ago she was there. Amy Martin, 17 years old at the current time. After a brief search, police located Amy's body in the woods near the now abandoned Martin home. So she was the only inhabitant, I guess. In addition to receiving a gunshot wound to the stomach, Amy showed injuries suggesting that she had been thrown out of a second story window of the house. An officer who helped recover the body told reporters that Amy's face had been mutilated in a very brutal manner. Ward was found dressed as a priest when he was pulled over. It is suspected that he impersonated a priest to gain his victim's trust after Catholic authorities in Rome confirmed that Ward was not an ordinated minister. The rest of the article is missing. Now we can get another ending. So maybe we are just insane and not a priest or the church just doesn't cover our, our rear. That's completely possible as well. Amy, we're gonna deal with you in our time. Hey, look at that. There's a creep. Can we interact with him? This house actually provides multiple guns. I'm very thankful for that. Okay, so one. And two. and go down. I mean, go right. Here is where he's gonna be. So who was that? Apparently nothing possessed. <laughs> okay, so that was a problem. Let's go home and see what happens now that we destroyed this maybe innocent person. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in him I will trust. I shall not be afraid of Okay, so this, this guy calls me father. Father and son. Esteemed Cardinal Gifford. With all due respect, you cannot grasp the importance of the work I am doing for young Michael without being present here. Michael needs my help now more than ever. In the past few weeks, I have made great progress with Michael's affliction. Nevertheless, whatever darkness is inside of him fights back with increasing ferocity. We must not let up the fight against the enemy at such a critical time. There is another reason why I dare not return Michael to his family, nor let them see him. The darkness inside him afflicts his soul, but it also causes a terrible strain on his body. So that uh, there may be no mistaking what I mean, I have enclosed a photograph of young Michael during one of our sessions. The photograph is missing. Convinced he cannot stop. 
maybe abusive and maybe fanatic. And this time we're gonna not shoot the girl. We're gonna not shoot the creepy dark creature that is a stalker, I guess. Let's let's shoot the deer. Ah, here you are, deer. Well, deer. Nothing we can exercise from it. Back to the car. Let's see that ending. I will say of the war, he is my refuge and my fortress. My cock is in my will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror. So why did you freaking kill a deer? <laughs> so we crash into a deer and he's crawling on his own. I'm not doing anything. I don't think I can help him. Oh, look at that. <laughs> the hunter. Unidentified boy discovered near a wrecked car. Body, not boy. The site of a deadly car accident was discovered along a road near Sterling this morning, along with the body of a person who has not yet been identified. At 6 a.m. this morning, a resident called to report an accident along Snake Meadow Hill Road. The driver of a silver sedan had swerved off the road and struck a tree. A spokesman for the police commented that the body appeared to have been dragged several yards away from the car, deeper into the woods after having been ejected from the front windshield. It was noted that the body had been mangled beyond recognition. Investigators suspect this was probably the work of coyotes. Police also noted that parts of a cleaned white-tailed deer were found in the trunk of a car. From a white-tailed deer, a hunter typically gets 75 pounds of meat. However, it appears the victim of the accident was only able to carry 25 pounds back to a car. Why is that relevant? That's so strange. 75, 25. That is really strange. Why would they point that out? Okay, what else can we do? Okay, so what if we shoot this guy and then return to the house? What then? Can we go back inside and get another gun? No, we cannot go back inside. Okay, so then we have this kind of ending where we shoot the squirrel. Right on. Back to the car we go. Let's see what happens now. Are you gonna have your speech again? Oh, the music changes. There's hooded creatures in red. We're slowing down. Apparently we messed with the sa Satanists. Shouldn't have done that. Game over ending 3 of 5, the offering. Hello, Amy. I am sorry to hear about your parents' decision. It is hard for people to trust what they do not understand. I know you are only 17, but you are clearly an adult and you are able to handle your own life. Do not let your mom and dad stop you from following your dreams. If there is anything I can do to help you, just let me know. We are having a get-together at the clinic Saturday night and I would love for you to stop by. We still consider you a part of the team, even if your mom and dad do not. We hope to see you there. Gary. Uh, apparently this is a Satanist. Used Amy for Satanist right, I suppose. Alright, let's get the gun and try the last ending. Alright, back to the car we go with the gun. Hello. So we shot the weird creature. And he got run over. I will say of the war, he is my refuge and my fortress. Okay, yada yada yada. In him I will trust. I shall not be afraid of the terror in the night, nor the evil that walketh in darkness. Because I have made the war my refuge. Because I have set my love upon him, therefore will he deliver me. I shall call upon him and he will answer me. He will be with All right, so we're just praying. He will That's nice. And me. I can't explain what happened at that house. That's nice. I can only have faith that I did the right thing. Glad you admit that. Agreed. But what was... What about the evil in her? Well, we did ex exercise the evil in her, right? But what road kill her then? Probably one of these freaks that uh, bullied her. 
So the shadowy creature we also are able to kill. That makes sense. The one who ran away when we pointed a gun at them. When faith endures. Faith, the name of the game. Police animal experts investigate Chupacabra. Remains found near Sterling. Sterling PD is enlisting the help of local animal experts from the University of Connecticut after the remains of an unidentified animal were found near Sterling. The remains of an animal, which some residents are calling a chupacabra, were discovered on Snake Meadow Hill Road by a motorist yesterday. The animal had apparently been struck by a vehicle and parts of its carcass were scattered across the road. Police say they initially investigated the gruesome scene because the motorist who discovered the remains had told them they appeared to be of a person. After arriving at the scene, police concluded that the remains were of some kind of animal. As a matter of public safety, we want to be sure about what exactly we're dealing with here, said a Sterling police spokesman. This is clearly not a deer or a coyote. If it's a mountain lion or exotic pet that escaped from its owners or an animal which, with rabies, we need to know about it. Animal experts attached to the investigation would not speculate about what kind of animal had been found, although they commented that the animal was hairless, anemic, and apparently suffered from the rickets, a vitamin D deficiency uh, that appears in animals and children who have not received enough sunlight. So yeah, that kid was uh, kept in a cellar apparently. What is anemic? Not enough red blood cells. I think they might, the developer might be confusing this with a condition that makes you have complete white skin. Albinism? I am curious whether if we just walk up to our car without having done anything, whether we get a 0 out of 5 endings, or whether we just get mortis by Michael Davies. Here we go. Okay and no extra text, so it's not a special ending. What if I take this rifle and uh, approach my car in a different way, in a way that would make the truck run over me as well as him? Is that even possible? All right. Oh yeah. <laughs> right, so we get just the Mortis ending. I am so excited that this game actually allows this kind of failure. That is fantastic. Okay, now let's take a look at this so look at, oh, there, the creature is still there. Actually, either in a different version or if you get a certain ending before this, I had the situation where you would approach the mirror and there is nothing behind you. Maybe it's just a free version. I mean, at first you have a shadow behind you, but then later in this scene you would have nothing. I have no idea why and whatever. But now it's back. We still have this shadowy creature behind us. which might mean something. Can't move, can't move, getting pulled in. What the heck is this? Well, I'll do... Whoa, whoa, frick, no, 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 no. Okay. Yes. Yes. You are slow, I like that. I'm gonna... I'm gonna try to exercise you. Oh. Oh yeah, phew, no deaths. More text, awesome. December 30th, 1986. So after this event. Because this is one year earlier, right? It was one year earlier when we tried the first time. Okay, dear Dr. McGlashan, it has been 30 days uh, since the beginning of my treatment here at Yale Psychiatric Institute. 30 days had uh, John as a patient. I'm guessing it's John. Dr. Spinal Associated, who has been so patient with me, has helped me understand my afflictions and has helped me find a way to move forward and accept the truth. With Dr. Spinal's help, I have come to accept what really happened in September at the Martin family residence. I accept that what happened was not the result of any supernatural phenomenon, but rather the desperate actions of a young girl driven to violence by her dogmatic parents, oh, I didn't realize her parents were also crazy, and old church rituals that are thought to drive out evil. I thought it was more of the people around them. I am happy to report that since accepting the truth, my nightmares have ceased, 
and I now enjoy peace of mind that I have not felt since the incident. Given my progress since first coming here, I respectfully request my release from Yale Psychiatric Institute contingent and in follow-up appointments with Dr. Spinal in the future. Sincerely, John Ward. By fighting this demon in the mirror, we realized we are not in the real world, but just in a fantasy. And that is the real ending. And now the mirror is empty. We don't even have our own reflection because we shot the mirror. But why are we still here, I wonder? And why is the gun still here? This is interesting. I thought of this as a, an extra ending, but now it's a combination of an additional truth, more lore, and whatever ending we decide to take. So strange. But obviously we're gonna take the one which seems to be the best, where we kill the crazy sick boy. Oh boy. So we are John Ward, we maybe exercise the girl, maybe not. We were at a mental institution and we got healed, at least we claim so. Maybe we're lying. Amy probably lives. I'm guessing Karen is the wife, is my wife. Gary is a Satanist. There are so many people we don't know exactly where to put them. Well, just like in The Exorcist, Amy is the most important person here. And then I guess we are as well. Looks like we are gonna have a peaceful life. Looks like... Michael Davies has had to die, but we're probably gonna find out more about him in the next game. All these crazy people probably get to live as well. I'm guessing that the parents and their twins might have died. I'm not exactly sure about that. It doesn't seem to be clearly stated. Faith is available on GameJolt, Itch.io and IndieDB. Only a free version on the latter. And each distribution platform has one special note. It could be that there is a little bit of confusion which text is in which version, especially with two versions per release and there being free and paid versions and the paid version being only one dollar. So the effort to double check everything would be extreme. But here are the two notes that we didn't see yet. Naked white man sighted along Sterling Road. A Sterling resident called the police last night claiming they saw a naked white man cross the road in front of her while driving home the previous night. Cherise one who owns a laundromat in Sterling says she was driving on Snake Meadow Hill Road on Sunday night when she saw someone run out into the road in front of her car. I saw something moving on the side of the road. I slowed down because I thought it could be a deer, but it was this naked white man running across the road. The way he ran on all fours on the ground, he looked like a big white spider. When asked how she knew it wasn't an animal, one told reporters, it couldn't have been a deer or dog or any kind of animal. I saw its face, it looked right at me and it was a human's face. And here's the other one. I just got a phone call from Nancy asking about a man she saw at the twins' birthday party. She described him to me, a tall man wearing dark clothing. I honestly cannot figure out who that could be. What frightens me to death is that she said she saw him talking to one of the twins away from the rest of the party. It's a good thing Nancy is single and lonely. How did I not notice a total stranger hanging around at my son's birthday party? The sheriff is going to come over tomorrow and ask about this man. This is too much for me to handle. I need Bob here and not in the Middle East. But perhaps the paid version is supposed to contain all three and I just missed one or two. If you think I missed anything in this uh, playthrough, let me know. And uh, this was a fantastic game, so thank you to all the people who suggested it to me. There were at least two or three people, I think, in the comments who told me to play this game and it was a very good recommendation. I do look forward to playing the next demo, the part 2 full version, and the part 3 demo and part 3 full version is coming out this year, probably. So if you're not subscribed yet and this was interesting, make sure you hit that subscribe button. And everybody else, thanks for staying with me throughout the video. You too, I will see in the next video. Until then, ciao!